Ooh, something smells good. Let's see what's for lunch. Mmm, bearings. Piping hot at 300 degrees. Before I put these bearings on, I did want to show you something else. I think I was telling you in another video how I put these these holes in there that's supposed to put some oil on the bearings on this PTO end of this crankshaft. And uh, I think the way they intended oil to go through there is around between the shaft, I guess. That's the only way it can get through there. But as you can see, there can't be more than even ten thousandths clearance. I don't know what makes them think oil is going to go through there. If, if it does, it's going to be almost nothing. And it certainly isn't going to be spraying on the bearings. So I'd say this spacer is uh, one thing that highly needs modification. Uh, now what I have here is I have a, a piece of PVC tubing that's going to help me tap that bearing on there real quick when I put it on there. This is the spacer that has the radius inside it, so it clears this radius that's ground on on the side of this uh, flange here, on, on the part of the crankshaft. So when, when you put it on, you want to have that going this way, and I figure uh, I'm going to get one of these bearings out of the oven there and see if I can't put it on. So, And I have a little bit of Loctite here, which it's uh, this is 760, but it's it's just a thin. Actually, it's kind of like a plastic. Let's see if the nozzle's plugged up. There we go. You see, I put a little drop on there. It don't take much, and I'm going to smear it around. Now it won't harden as long as it's exposed to air, or if it gets hot enough, it might go hard. But uh, obviously when I put that bearing on there it might harden up pretty fast so I put that around there just a thin film of that everything's been cleaned with uh, acetone and a little scotch bright you can use emery cloth something to make sure there's no dirt or bungs or anything on the bearing surface where you're going to put this thing now I'm going to put my gloves on that's so I can pick up the bearing because 300 degrees is a bit too hot. You can't pick that up with your hands. Anything over 140, you're going to want to let go of it. And the reason I got to do this is because I'm going to have to move fast because it won't slide on there unless you warm up the bearing a little bit. But you see, with it being warm like that, and I can. Oh, oh! Come on, you. It should go up on there. I don't know why it's not. There we go. Now we got it. So that's one bearing. Now you've got to put them on the right way so the balls are facing this way because that's the easiest way for the oil to get in there. And every two stroke engine I ever saw the balls, I guess you can see that, the balls like this are facing this way. That bearing is hot on there and it's cooling off. I can touch it now so it's down to 140 degrees. That's why you got to move kind of fast. Uh, this right here is supposed to collect the oil. That's the idea I've got. When it comes through this bearing. So this side's open with the balls. It's going to come through this way and hopefully collect in this kind of a groove around here. It's not very deep. And all I did was put on a drill press, drill these. I just used a center punch, drilled these holes, and then put a countersink on this side just as a way to collect the oil. And hopefully the pressure of the air going through there whenever the crankcase compresses is going to blow oil through there and into the next barrel. But you can see that thing's it's pretty, pretty tight on there. <laughs> I don't... I don't see how they figured oil would get through there. I really think this is not good. So now I'm ready to put on another bearing, but of course the crankshaft's starting to get a little warm now. So this one, hopefully I can get it on there quick enough that it'll be it'll be on there all right. So we'll put a little bit of Loctite on there. 
like so you would need to put a lot in there like I say it won't harden if it's exposed to air it, that's why they call it an anaerobic it's it it kind of expands in there like glass or something and it locks it mechanically and what with the bearing being a little warm it's going to shrink on there which is kind of like a shrink fit and you can't get no better than that all right get my next bearing and again <clears throat> I'm going to put this bearing on this way there now as that cools off that inner race will be be really on there and plus it's got lock time on it so that's the way I did it on this end of the shaft this is the mag end the spacer here they had this big plate which as you can see if you put that on there it covers up that bearing and the bearing that's going to go on there so somehow oil's got to get around this washer I don't see any way it can do that at least not very easily so my modification here is I made these spacers they're just a plain washer but it's smaller in diameter and when that's on there as you can see it doesn't block the bearing so the air <coughs> the air gasoline and oil mixture mostly it's going to be just oil it will be a fog of oil in there because the gasoline gets evaporated into vapor that's what the carburetor does so it's going to be an oil mist it's going to blow through this bearing from this side here through those balls past this spacer and into the next bearing now some people have put double row bearings on there I think that might be a real good idea although they're real expensive but it would do the same thing and it would be open inside there wouldn't be anything keeping oil from going through so hopefully I can get it on there a little bit of this is high strength Loctite this isn't this isn't the now they do have some they call high temperature but it's only about I don't know 50 degrees 25 degrees uh, more temperature it can take before it lets loose if you heat it to 450 degrees any kind of Loctite is going to come loose at least any kind I ever heard of so I got my spacer on there now now get my gloves on put that up on there trouble it gets kind of I don't think I had it hot enough because I didn't have that bearing I had the door open there while I was doing the other side and I think I got cooled off too much but anyways I had to bump a little bit to get it on there but there she is now and it should run real smooth and quiet like that well I know somebody's gonna have a question about these inner bearings but you'll notice they've got the the balls facing this way and on both sides so balls are facing this way and balls are facing that way these here are snap rings and they come with the bearings when you get the other bearings they'll have snap rings with them too but you don't use them they're just for a rubber o-ring in there but these here are what's controlling the end float on the crankshaft so it can't move back and forth in the crankcase these two snap rings control that and the only way you can replace these bearings or these seals is you'd have to take these apart which I'm going to have to make a tool to do that I've got the dimensions and everything now and I can make it and that would be to take this crankshaft apart in the center here which they're put on a taper with Loctite same same idea but you got to use the high strength Loctite sometimes they call it bearing and stud mount uh, you can get it at the bearings. All you have to do is set it down in there. You don't have to worry about timing this or anything. You you set the the uh, the plate, the rotary valve plate on there on a little uh, spline shaft, and you can adjust it by which spline you put it on when you when you go to time the intake on it. Uh, I thought I'd show you a bearing that if you can hear that, that's a bad bearing. That one's no good. You don't want to use anything like that. They should be absolutely silent when you spin them. 